a good one for sure. Uh, always makes me happy you know, to see the, the car for the first time uh, completed. This, is, this was actually five minutes ago now and uh, I'm still digesting it and trying to turn around to have a look because it looks really beautiful. Uh, again, uh, another step more beautiful compared to last year. I think the, the red is a bit more alive, you know, a bit more bright. The, um, the car is a bit more styled, a bit more redefined. Looks like a good evolution from last year, uh, a lot more detail in it. And yeah, I cannot wait to drive it. Obviously to try and improve those numbers, no? but uh, I think the priority this year to, for the team is to make another step forward uh, like we did last year. Now we want to do another step and definitely get in that fight for the World Championship for all the race wins and yeah, try and be as competitive as we can, but at the same time trying to improve in all the areas that we've set ourselves uh, the goals. It's been a bit of a long winter. Um, because the season finished a bit earlier than, than what it used to be. So I managed to start my training probably also a bit earlier than, than other years uh, as I got the rest done earlier on. And yeah, it, it has felt long this, this, let's say two months in a, since I started my training program. Um, I focus myself maybe a bit more in the cardio side. Normally I've been lifting a lot of weights, trying to gain weight, but now I'm nearly at the limit of my of my of the weight limit of the of what a driver is allowed to to weight i have to focus more on the cardio side so yeah i'm working on it as much as possible and uh, i feel fresh fit like always my most italian skill or behavior um that's a tricky one uh I think I, most of my behaviors are very similar to Italians. And uh, I feel that when I'm around the mechanics, when I'm around the engineers, uh, obviously people know, know now by now that I live in Italy. So I feel very Italian in all the ways that I behave and I go about here in Italy. But uh, yeah, behaviors, one particular one, I'm not sure. Maybe the antipasti before, before lunch for me are. <laughs> very difficult to take out of my diet. Now that I'm trying to lose a kilo before the first race is probably one of the most difficult things to, to avoid. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we, we have to know. Uh, we have a lot of fi fun away from the circuits. This year we have 23 races, so there's going to be a lot of free time in between uh, one back-to-back -back race where we stay in a city or where we have to go somewhere else and I'm keen to be as competitive as we are on track with him as we are on paddle or or any other sport we play that uh, I'm sure we're gonna have uh, fun and, and enjoy it. It feels amazing. I mean, it was only two minutes ago uh, that I saw it for, for the first time uh, fully uh, mounted, but uh, it's always an amazing feeling. It means that the season, the start of the season is uh, very soon, uh, which is exciting times. We've been uh, putting a lot of work into the new car and uh, now it's uh, finally all done. So uh, the test uh, very soon and then the first race. Oh, we want to, uh, to improve that. Uh, last year was a, was a good step forward. Uh, we need to do just the same this year and hopefully um, get the championship. That is the, the target for all the team and it is the target for me too. Get more wins, hopefully be more consistent from the first race to the, to the last race um, and hopefully we'll get that title. It feels good. We always need to wait before putting the, the real car on track to obviously correlate all data. But on the, on the simulator, it, it feels positive. There are some differences, so we need to adapt a little bit the driving style. But uh, overall, the feeling is good. It seems that the weaknesses that we had last year um, are, are better for, for this year, which was the, which was the goal. Um, but we still need to wait the first few uh, real laps before, before speaking.
I spent uh, my winter training mostly um, relaxing for the first part of it with, uh, with the family and friends. Um, but after that, a lot of training. I went to the mountains in, in Italy, um, spent uh, two, three weeks there. It was really intense training, but really good. And yeah, that was it. It's actually not that long. It doesn't feel that long, uh, but it's good because I miss racing. Well, I guess the same as every year. Monaco and Monza are the two most uh, special ones for, for us and for me. Monaco is my home race. Monza is the home race for, for the team and we have a lot of, of support there, so these two races. Um, and Las Vegas will be a very, very special, special event too. It's new on this year's calendar. Formula One in the US is getting bigger and bigger, so I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be uh, very, very special. I am not planning to beat Carlos at golf because I am way too far behind. So uh, yeah, hopefully we'll work together well in, a, in order to, uh, to achieve uh, good things on track. But at golf, I've got too much work to do. Very busy. As you can imagine, that it's a short notice before the first race, but uh, it is like it is that uh, I'm using the days to know everybody into the company and uh, to go deeply in detail, but it's a short notice for sure. First, it's true that it's uh, always very emotional. It's uh, the baby for one season, that it means that. Uh, when it's come to the reality, it's always a bit emotional. Um, I love the car. Um, I love the ride. And uh, with the large Ferrari on the rear wing, uh, I'm more than pleased. Um, but now, you know, at the end of the day, the most important is the speed of the car. And that uh, I think that uh, we are focused today on delivery, but quite soon we'll be focused on performance. I think that when you are at Ferrari, coming uh, after 2022, the team uh, finished P2, that you can't have another objective than to win. Uh, I don't want to say that it will be easy, because I think on the grid that you will have uh, uh, Red Bull and Mercedes with exactly the same target, and uh, only one team will win, and only one driver will win the championship. But at the end of the day, we need to have this kind of target. We need to be in the mindset to do a better job tomorrow than today, and uh, to be always trying to improve the system. As we said before, it's a very short notice and it's difficult to have a big change into the organization that we will do some uh, uh, marginal changes into the organization on the race team operation. And then let's see after Bahrain and uh, the first couple of races what we will do. They all want to win, but the most important is to win with and for Ferrari. That uh, we have to be clear on the objective. I think they both have the talent and the skills to, to achieve it. We will have the capacity to provide exactly the same cars to the two drivers. But for sure that if at one stage during the season we are competing with another team or with another drivers that will have to make choice, they are perfectly aware of this. But uh, so far we have no number one and number two. In any case, we don't lose or win the championship in Bahrain. It will be a very long one and we will have to fight and fight and fight all the season. La monoposto del 2023 è un'evoluzione della macchina con cui abbiamo corso l'anno scorso, ma in realtà è stata tutta integralmente riprogettata. In aerodinamica l'obiettivo era duplice, migliorare il carico verticale guadagnando quello che è stato perso per i nuovi regolamenti aerodinamici e ottenere le caratteristiche di bilancio che ci eravamo prefissati. Anche il comparto sospensione è stato completamente ridisegnato da una parte per assecondare gli aerodinamici e ottenere i risultati che ci eravamo fissati e dall'altra parte per aumentare le capacità di regolazione in pista della vettura. 
Le modifiche più evidenti della nuova monoposto sono sicuramente la sospensione anteriore dove siamo passati da una configurazione con track road alto a una configurazione con track road basso guidato dalle esigenze dell'aerodinamica. Anche l'ala anteriore è diversa così come la struttura del naso avendo il primo elemento non più connesso con il naso ma floating. La parte del bodywork è più in continuità con quello che è stato fatto l'anno scorso ma reso più estremo. Il budget cap è diventato un asse di prestazione irrinunciabile, quindi nell'affrontare la progettazione della macchina di quest'anno non abbiamo potuto prescindere da prenderlo in considerazione. Il modo in cui l'abbiamo preso in considerazione è stato quello di andare a determinare, cercare quelle aree con poco o nullo valore aggiunto sulla prestazione della vettura e cercare di tenere quelle zone della vettura uguali a quelle della macchina precedenti. In termini numerici il risultato ottenuto è stato che eh, il numero di carry over nella macchina di quest'anno è doppio rispetto a quelli di una macchina con un regolamento precedente senza la presenza del budget cap. I nuovi regolamenti aero pensati dalla federazione per ridurre il rischio di sviluppare proposing in pista hanno portato a una perdita secca di prestazione aerodinamica, una perdita anche consistente. In termini di sviluppo il lavoro non è stato molto dissimile da quello svolto negli anni precedenti e abbiamo dovuto semplicemente riadattare le geometrie della vettura per le nuove strutture di flusso che si sono generate per i nuovi regolamenti. We think the best way to deal with such a long calendar is to create the best environment for, uh, for our team. But creating the best environment means putting the right conditions for them to work uh, in, in the best atmosphere, to work in, in an environment that will allow them to express themselves uh, at best. So then, of course, we decided to take uh, a little bit of a, um, perhaps difficult to start with approach. We decided to go the route of um, rotation. So we are rotating our teams where possible. Of course, it doesn't apply to, to every team members, but wherever we feel that the rotation is possible between the factory-based group and the uh, race group, we have a light rotations in such a way that um, people can have perhaps a little uh, less long calendar and also have a stronger connection with the factory. Finally, um, we, we try to form um, an as protective bubble as possible around our race team. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's part of a fairly extensive well-being programs that we have for the, for the, um, uh, the people traveling, traveling with us. So uh, we try to take care as, uh, of, of their, their physical well-being, of their mental well-being. We try to have, uh, again, uh, a very uh, program that looks at 360 degrees, how to support them best to go through uh, such a long season. And of course, nobody is forgetting that uh, it's the best job in the world, so uh, we, we all go into it with, uh, with a smile on our face. In, in 2023, only 13 races will have what we call the standard uh, race format. Uh, so we'll have these 13 races, which we have been very much used to. Then we will have the six sprint races. Um, which, which, you know, call for different automatism, call from uh, perhaps as well a different preparations going to the race weekends. Um, on top of that, we'll have uh, two races with uh, Pirelli testing during FP2. And finally, a new, a new entry, should I say, for 2023, we'll have two more races where we'll uh, test an alternative tire allocations, whereby the drivers will have to use the hard compound in, in Q1, the medium compound in Q2 and the soft compound in Q3. So as you can see, only 13 uh, standard races, very many variations around that for the, uh, for, the, for the other races. What it means for us, it will be the same for everyone, what it means for us is uh, another, another layer of focus on the preparations to make sure that uh, we arrive there as prepared as possible to make sure that our automatism are working smoothly and um, that we uh, deal with all the operational and legal implications as best as we can. 
You know, of course, we had a, a very, very extensive review of 2022, trying to find out where we have performed strongly, uh, obviously uh, analyzing deeply where we have been lacking, as there is no, no, no need to hide. Uh, we have learned uh, some of the things last year in, uh, in, in the hard way on, on, on Sunday afternoon. So, of course, we have had this uh, 360 review. What it means for us is that we are concentrating on uh, giving our people the best platform to express uh, themselves. So we have been reviewing our processes, we have been reviewing the way we are working in order to, to make sure that each, uh, each individual can express itself at best individually and of course uh, collectively. Well, the truth is, in, uh, in the modern world in which we are, uh, it's all about uh, correlations and making sure that uh, the, uh, the car is matching the, the models uh, with which we have been working all winter. So it's true for uh, the vehicle model, it's true for the tire model, it's true, of course, for the aerodynamic model. So it's all about correlations. Uh, does the car perform as we were expecting? This is very much where the big part of the testing uh, focus will be. Now, of course, once this is done, once this mapping of the car is, is done, we will then be trying to explore its setup envelope, trying to push its limitations to understand uh, how to uh, improve it further. And then, of course, with the test being so close to uh, the actual uh, race weekend, we will, uh, we will dedicate some of this testing time to uh, start our race weekend preparations, to start to do pit stop, quality simulation, race simulations with both uh, Charles and Carlos. And uh, we will not know uh, certainly uh, where we are compared to the others at the end of this test because it's, uh, it's simply uh, very difficult to guess and everybody has, has different programs. But what we will know is where we are compared to uh, our own expectations. Is the car performing uh, as much as we felt uh, uh, it would perform?